Good morning, everyone. In this presentation, I'm going to show how to develop sustainable cities focusing on the sector of energy. In the beginning, I'm going to make a, a brief introduction about sustainability in the cities. I'm going to outline the aim, the objectives and the approach to the sustainability. I'm going to describe briefly the pilot case, the scenarios for the optimization of the site, and of course, present the results and the conclusions. But uh, is it really uh, possible to have uh, sustainable cities? Is it realistic? Although cities produce and discharge waste, they have significant advantages and should not be considered simply as areas which burden the environment. They can ensure high quality of life in, in the, generally and uh, much uh, higher, uh, if properly designed, from the suburban and rural areas. They also offer a lot of uh, services which are much more organized than the rural areas, especially health services. Also, educational opportunities, job opportunities, and many other assets for which I suppose most of you and I live in the cities. Energy is the main parameter that determines the quality of life in cities and their environmental quality. Therefore, energy is the key to sustainability. Urbanization dramatically affects the energy consumption. A study has shown that while 1% increase of gross national product equally increases the energy consumption, an urban population increase of 1% increases energy consumption by 2.2, that is more than double. Cities also produce 70% um, of the global greenhouse gas emissions. In developing countries, the cities spare 80% of the costs which are associated with the climate change. Nowadays, with the rapid urbanization tendencies, sustainability in city is more crucial than ever. So what do we do? What do we need? We need a common and progressive problem-solving approach which employs strategies and tools which aim at reducing energy consumption and CO2 emissions and thus improving uh, the environment in the city. This is exactly what the project SUI, Smart Urban Isle uh, project, uh, achieved. This is a, a project in the framework of the Urban Aeronet European uh, project, which probes the urban eye as the basic unit that is an area within the infrastructure of the city as the basic unit on which uh, cities, sustainable cities, uh, could be developed. It aims to increase the urban energy savings and reduce the CO2 emissions. It is based on three cornerstones procedure, and it proposes a whole new approach to urban planning that allows cities to grow in a sustainable way. Um, the three cornerstones are bioclimatic design, which optimizes the energy demand and improves the thermal comfort, uh, an energy uh, a management platform, which uh, optimizes the control of the energy flows with interactive management systems, and the mini network, which utilizes the renewable energy sources, which are available on the site. So, initially, we selected an area within the historic cultural and commercial center of a coastal city in Cyprus called Limassol. We developed a 3D model of the urban isle 
based on architectural drawings and on the on-site observations. In fact, we use uh, AutoCAD, but we use for the studies many other software according to the simulations who wanted to carry out, uh, such as uh, the um, uh, building the designer, uh, the Energy Plus, uh, the ISPM. The ISPM is the official governmental tool for the certification of the buildings. And we use the NVMET to determine the outdoor thermal discomfort and make all these studies for the open spaces. We investigated the CO2 emissions and we estimate that those at all levels of so the open spaces, the building, the mobility, and we ascertain all the shortcomings of the, of the site. Uh, on this basis, we developed a set of scenarios uh, which improves uh, which improve the thermal comfort and the energy efficiency and has reduced the CO2 emissions. This involved bioclimatic uh, design measures, energy efficiency, introduction of renewable energy sources, and alternative modes of transportation. And then we did evaluation of the results and the conclusions. This is the site of the, um, of the, the urban isle that we have chosen. Um, and this site is in the town center, the built up area of the city of Limassol, the coastal city of Limassol. Besides residential buildings and offices, it contains uh, retail stores, uh, educational buildings, cafeterias, uh, cocktail bars. And um, uh, within this uh, urban isle, we have uh, chosen a building, a public uh, building, um, which um, uh, we did thorough studies to reach uh, zero energy, smart zero energy building. Uh, this is a university building, administrative university building that contains a lot of other services like um, work, workplaces, a lecture room and two meeting rooms. The, we determined uh, the outer uh, conditions uh, the existing materials of the horizontal surfaces uh, appear to have uh, very low emissivity and high ab absorptivity. Uh, there is uh, asphalt on the roads, uh, granite cube uh, stones, medium gray on the pavement uh, and gray concrete on uh, the ground of most of the open uh, spaces and very few trees. These uh, conditions, these existing uh, material conditions of the order of the open spaces cause uh, discomfort uh, during uh, the summer. Um, the PMD, the predicted mean uh, vote shows uh, that um, shows four points, which is classified extremely hot on the scale of the PMD. Uh, which is uh, there most of the time and in most of the open spaces. And the radiant heat is the main impact factor which causes outdoor discomfort. On the building now, uh, we found out that there is thermal comfort only on the first and second floor. Also, we have uh, poor ventilation on the ground floor. And we also determine the energy um, consumption of, of the building uh, by using three methods. We use the electricity bills, which we obtain from the tenants, or from the owners and tenants. Um, we use the uh, software of design builder and the ISBM, which is the official governmental tool for the certification of buildings. This came to be 116 kilowatt hours per square meter. Uh, per year, and the CO2 emissions 82 in reality um, uh, were estimated from the energy consumption uh, kilograms uh, per square meter yearly. Uh, as far as the use of this energy is concerned, uh, the uh, cooling um, uh, expenditure is the highest, uh, with, uh, followed by heating and the equipment. 
As far as the rest of the buildings uh, are concerned, the built-up area, the rest of the built-up areas, we estimate that the energy consumption uh, by the type of the buildings uh, and the use uh, of, of the buildings. Um, and this came to be 220 kilowatt hours per square meter yearly and with uh, CO2 emissions, so 142 kilograms per square meters yearly. As far as the mobility is concerned, the city of Limassol is characterized by the car-oriented transport and uh, it has um, a percentage of, um, of automobile transportation mode uh, reaching 92% and uh, a network of public uh, transport of buses of 1.5%, which is very low, as well as the cycling being uh, 0.7 and walking a network of uh, 5.7. The mobility from the mobility studies, uh, the uh, estimated uh, CO2 appear to be very high, and this highlight the environmental burden of the mobility in Limassol. Uh, in fact, the mobility CO2 emissions they have a share of more than 50% over the total emissions of the urban island study. We also investigated and assessed the renewable energy potential of this site. Uh, as you might know, Cyprus ranks very high, one of the top countries in the world that um, exploits uh, the thermal, um, uh, thermal solar, uh, especially for hot water, but the, no, it is found also that there is high potential, of course, uh, from solar energy in terms of PV and a hybrid system, a combination that is of PV and thermal. So, collectively, uh, these are the results of the status quo of the case study. We have um, uh, CO2 emissions at the building area and uh, mobility and lighting um, levels, which is quite high. And uh, this and also the energy consumption, uh, this amount to 676 uh, kilowatt hours per square meters and the CO2 emissions uh, per square meter yearly is 250 um, uh, kilograms. So this is the summary of the shortcomings and the potentials of the site. Uh, high or extreme discomfort during the summer with PMV over four points in most of the outdoor area and most of the time, which is uh, highly discomforting. And uh, energy performance uh, deficiencies at all levels and all categories on the aisle, the building level, the urban aisle area, and the mobility. There is high energy consumption uh, due to the poor energy performance of the building's envelope. Um, the minimum on site renewable energy uh, production, utilization, and mobility is responsible for more than 50% of the total CO2 emissions in the area. But there are good news there is high potential of uh, energy production from the renewable energy sources. This amounts to 2,260 megawatt hours. So we started employing various measures on this basis and also on the basis of our knowledge uh, we, we have about um, uh, designing sustainable cities. Um, these measures and, and from these measures we started developing various scenarios in combination that is with measures. And those aim at minimizing the thermal discomfort conditions during the summer, but at the same time without affecting the winter comfort. So we improve the materiality of the horizontal surfaces. On the, uh, we replace the road pavement materials 
and the, um, uh, the road and the pavement materials with higher uh, gray, uh, uh, higher albedo value. We added shading devices um, around uh, the aisle, retractable uh, shading devices uh, so that they don't uh, affect the beneficial sunshine in the winter. And we place trees, um, we doubled the existing trees in number um, in the whole uh, area. The microclimate improvement um, had, of course, uh, improvement on the comfort conditions of the aisle. There was a significant reduction of PMV uh, by, by two points um, under uh, shade and a significant improvement in all the other uh, spaces within uh, the aisle. But most importantly, there was reduction in air temperature. This reached uh, two degrees, two kelvins under the shade. So uh, for the mobility, we developed two scenarios, one being very radical and very ambitious in which we, um, we replaced all the transport with public transport by introducing uh, routes uh, by bus. And this um, incurred a, a, a mini, a reduction of the CO2 emissions by 50%. The other uh, scenario we developed was more realistic, in which we reduced the, automobile, um, uh, the automobiles to 70% from 92, and we increased the networks of bus, of, of the public transport, that is, and the cycling and the walking. And this caused a reduction of 20%. On the building level, we replaced all the air conditioning um, of the ground and mezzanine with um, a higher uh, quality, with a seasonal coefficient uh, performance and uh, better uh, seasonal energy efficiency rates. We replaced all the existing light bulbs with LED throughout the building. We introduced uh, management control systems for uh, temperature, indoor temperature. We placed cool uh, paint on the roof. We added, we actually did this um, intervention. We actually put window film shade on all the single glazed windows and that came to be very effective. And we added a PV, 120 square meters on the roof and 224 uh, square meters on the south wall. These measures, they incurred uh, energy reduction by 40% and the, um, uh, a reduction in the CO2 emissions by 60%. For the whole, for the rest of the buildings on the on the side, we applied the light renovation uh, on all the buildings of the smart urban aisle, and we introduced um, a mini uh, network uh, PV. Uh, this in this case, which uh, had as a result uh, an average re reduction in energy consumption by 25 percent. When we say light innovation, we mean uh, roof and wall insulation um, around six to eight um, centimeters of insulation. We replace all the single with double glazing windows and we upgraded the air conditioning uh, systems as before. The mini network achieved um, on a yearly and monthly basis 100% self-sufficiency uh, on the buildings. Uh, which is an amazing result. Uh, th these are uh, collectively the results uh, after the interventions, after the suggested um, uh, e measures that we took on the side. The applied scenarios, the optimized uh, applied scenarios, um, cost uh, energy and CO2 reductions at all levels, on the building level, um, the building that we investigated, the public building, the energy was reduced by 40% and the CO2 emissions by 60%. The light renovation we applied for the area buildings uh, plus the mini network 
um, and the open space and lighting cause reduction of 30% in the energy and the 40% in the CO2 emissions and the um, more realistic scenario of the mobility that we apply caused a 20% reduction of CO2 emissions. On the total side, the energy consumption reduction was 30% and the, um, consequently the CO2 reduction of emissions was 42%. Of course, in addition to this, we had the reduction in air temperature, which made it more comfortable in the summer by two kelvins, uh, um, rising to two kelvins um, under the tree shade. So let's see, um, in summary, uh, the most important conclusions is that um, a combination of increased outdoor surface uh, higher albedo uh, in addition with trees and shading devices is effective for reducing the thermal discomfort uh, during the summer. Also with the smart uh, zero energy building renovation, even without the addition of insulation in this case, uh, we achieved very high energy savings in heating and especially in cooling for the buildings um, uh, uh, rising to 40% and, the, uh, and this caused considerable CO2 emissions uh, rising to 60%. We saw that there is high share of mobility uh, for the CO2 emissions and we can achieve um, reduction of this uh, by 20% uh, with the environmental benefits that they follow just by increasing the use of public transportation the cycling and the walking networks. And last but not least, the uh, utilization of the renewable energy on the size, which is presently at minimum level, a mini network a system with solar energy is 100% self-efficient for buildings and um, uh, this contributes to the development of sustainable cities and therefore advancing the climate change mitigation. Thank you.